Hello, everybody. Wannabe Reviewer here. Welcome back to the Wannabe Podcast, episode 39. Before we begin this week, I just want to say that if you have not listened to last week's podcast yet, then you are missing out. Because last week, I had a guest on, one Spider Island Slim from the Galactic Happy Hour, and I gotta tell you, I had a great time just sitting down with Slim and talking about everything from what we've been watching recently to what we've been playing, some of our favorite video game titles, how we got into anime, how we got into video games, all that great stuff. I mean, I am not lying. Uh, In the podcast, if you listen to it, when I say like, wow, we've been recording for like an hour and a half, you know, and I hadn't even noticed that had been that long. Like, like that's real, you know, like the time just seemed to fly by because I was just having a really good time just chatting with him, you know? And so, yeah, like I said, if you haven't listened to that podcast yet, I suggest checking it out. I had an awesome time just talking with him back and forth about, you know, stuff that we love to geek out about. So I would suggest checking that out once again, you know, Slim, if you're listening to this episode, Thank you so much for being on last episode. I had a great time having you on. And yeah, guys, with that being said, uh, this week we are back to the same old, same old. It's just me. So yeah, with that being said, you know, let's get down to the usual. As always, I guess I'll start with anime. And last week I brought up an anime called Given. And as I was talking to Slim, I said that Given kind of gave me vibes of Beck, Mongolian Chop Squad, uh, you know, because it seems to be about like these group of like kids that they want to like make a band and it seems it's going to be about their struggle, you know, trying to make it big or whatever. And sure enough, you know, last week I hadn't watched it yet, but since the last podcast, I sat down and I watched the two episodes that are available. And in a way I was right, but in a way I was wrong. Because it does ha- it does remind me a lot of Beck, but it, it's like, you know, it's different. Uh, while Beck was very much, like, you know, it's very punk. And it has to do with, like, the main character being this, like, 15-year-old kid or whatever that has, like, no direction in life. And he meets this, like, 17-year-old rebel who, you know, he plays in a band. And they perform in, like, clubs or bars or whatever. And they're trying to make it big. And like I said, it has, like, a very punk feel to it where everyone's kind of, like, a little bit of an outcast. Everyone's really, like, kind of, like, a little bit of a troublemaker slash wild child. Um, Uh, And we follow the 15-year-old kid who, you know, wants to learn about music and he is influenced by, like, the older guy or whatever. Uh, Given, it's actually kind of funny because it follows the guitarist who at the beginning of the series, he already plays with, like, two other guys. And they have, like, a little band, you know, that they're practicing. They go to a studio. They, you know, they're, they're trying to, like, you know, get off the ground or whatever. And he meets this younger student. Or at least he seems younger the way he acts. Maybe it's, like, maybe he's the same year as him. I'm not too sure. But, you know, he meets a protege that wants to learn about music. And he gives in, starts teaching him to play the guitar. And then, like, at the end of the second episode, he finds out that this kid can, like, sing really good. So, yeah, it's funny because it has, like I said, it has those back, like, qualities of, you know, there being, like, a kid who doesn't really know about music. He wants to learn about the guitar. He's a good singer. All that good stuff. But it is very different that while Beck was very punk and we follow the kid as he's learning about guitar and stuff, here instead, we're following the guitarist who already knows about the guitar and he's teaching the protege and everything's a little more, like, it's a little more mellow. But uh, regardless, though, from what I've seen so far, seems like a really good series. You know, it seems like it has potential. I've enjoyed seeing how this guy opens up, takes this kid under his wing, starts teaching him guitar, and you can kind of see how they're going to start forming a band and stuff definitely looks interesting so yeah i mean as of right now as i said the series is called given and it is available on crunchyroll and so far i recommend it you know um as anything else you know maybe as it goes on maybe it'll get annoying maybe it'll be full of cliches i mean i don't know it could happen but as of right now i'm really enjoying it and i do really want to see like where it goes you know so i do recommend it so if it sounds interesting to you if you enjoy slice of life type anime and if you enjoy stuff where like it has to do with like music and trying to make it big or like form a band or whatever then you know i would say check it out so there you go
Uh, moving on. Another anime that I watched. Uh, this one I watched it because a friend suggested it to me. I mean, I kind of mentioned it during last week's podcast. I have like a certain friend that he loves like the etchy slash kind of trashy comedy anime. And so he told me, you know, why don't you check out this anime? And so I gave it a shot and it's not great. But it's, I think it's, you know, it's entertaining enough. So uh, the anime I'm talking about is called Magical Senpai. And it's actually not a like full series compared to a usual anime that's like about what, like 23, 24 minutes. Each episode is 15 minutes. And even then it's composed of like five different like little story sketch things but like i said i mean it might be kind of trashy but it's still it's still fairly entertaining you know uh basically it's about this kid we don't know his name yet he's just called assistant coon but basically he kind of gets roped into helping out this girl that she's always like dressed like a magician like she always has the top hat she has the cape you know or cloak whatever you want to call it and she wants to make like a magic i guess like club at her school and she's always trying to do like tricks and stuff you know like card tricks uh tricks where she escapes from being uh bound with ropes that sort of thing and basically she ropes him into being her assistant and joining her club and like i said it is like kind of trashy because there's like a lot of fan service a lot of like panty shots a lot of like you know pervy stuff but uh i don't know i mean like the way they do it it fits the show it fits the tone um and it's like there is stuff that even if it's not pervy it is like funny because she's kind of an airhead and she like really sucks at doing magic so there is like some comedy and scene you know either she ends up like in a weird situation due to her like airheadedness or there's like some comedy of just seeing assistant coon pulling off tricks that she can't because he's just better at magic than she is so i don't know i mean it's not the best show ever like i said it is kind of trash very fan servicey not much of a plot going on you know but if you want just like a simple easy to watch short show that like i said you know each episode is like 15 minutes so you can just sit down every week have you know some laughs or a little bit of fan service or whatever then magical senpai once again it's on crunchyroll so far there's like three episodes out and you know if it sounds like something you're interested in then check it out Finally, this last anime that I watched this week, uh, well, at least when it comes to like a new anime I watched this week, this one is a really weird one. I remember that I had heard of just like the title and the description before this anime season started, and I was like, okay, I need to check that out because it's weird. Uh, the title of this anime is Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two Hit Multi Target Attacks? And so, yeah, if you've ever seen a show like Sword Art Online or Konosuba or, you know, any of those type of shows, uh, they're called isekai animes. And isekai basically means trapped in another world. And, you know, recently, like ever since like Sword Art Online made it like really popular, like every season, there's just a whole bunch of, you know, isekai anime. Uh, like last season, you know, I just covered uh, Rising of the Shield Hero, where basically protagonist ends up in a video game. I mean, it doesn't always have to be a video game, but I think the most common thing, you know, protagonist ends up like in a video game type RPG world, and he has to, you know, go on quests and level up and make a party and go on adventures and stuff. And what makes this one different and what kind of caught my attention is that when the anime starts, it's this kid that he's filling out a survey and it's asking questions about his relationship with his mom. And as he's filling it out, it shows that the mom is cooking and she's talking to him and she's being like really sweet and that sort of thing. And he's basically ignoring her because it's shown that he doesn't have like a very close relationship with his mom. Uh, in fact, he's kind of a dick, honestly. Like, I know a lot of people in the comments that were really annoyed because they feel like he's kind of disrespectful to his mom, which, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the point, you know? Like, I'll get to that in a moment. But yeah, basically, you know, there's this kid, doesn't have the best relationship with his mom, but, you know, we're introduced to him. He's filling out the survey. Uh, 
uh, basically, this lady shows up and she says, like, yeah, I'm here on behalf of the government. We're doing some sort of like a, I don't remember what she called it, experiment or some sort of project. And basically, she goes up to his computer, does some stuff with it, and he gets pulled into the game world. And he's really excited for like a few seconds because, you know, he's in a game world. He's looking around. Everything looks great. Uh, his happiness, though, is ruined when like about a few seconds later, his mom shows up in the game. And she's like, yeah, I was telling you to wait for me because I'm coming too. And he's like really mad because he's like, why is my mom here? And basically, you know, they go before like the king or whatever. You know, it's just an excuse for them to be like told about like the rules of the game and stuff. And yeah, he's just kind of told that like they can't tell him why his mom is with him. But it seems like it has something to do with like improving their relationship. You know, like he's not told much, but it's implied, you know, like you can kind of start piecing it together that the survey he took made him eligible for his mom to come with him so like you know maybe to like fix the relationship or whatever uh regardless you know they're explaining the rules they're explaining like their different quests and stuff they're given their stats and you know they're told to like choose a weapon or whatever a starter weapon and there's like three weapons like stuck in a stone he pulls one out he's really happy because it looks really cool uh the mom goes and she pulls the remaining two out one's a sword that controls like earth and like has all sorts of like i think like fire powers the other one's one that controls like the ocean supposedly and it has water powers and you know she says you know oh you know i don't want to take just one because i think the other one's going to be lonely and so she ends up with like two swords she's like double sorting it and yeah there's just a lot of comedy showing the protagonist annoyed that his mom is there and a lot of comedy from showing like that the mom's kind of ditzy and she's like kind of wild and how she does things like not only does she take this two swords just because you know her excuse is that she thinks that the other one would get lonely but uh once they're kind of you know getting things settled and they're gonna start their adventure as soon as they arrive at like the adventurers guild or whatever she freaking attacks it because she's like if we want to be taken seriously we got to show them that we're not playing around and so like to her son's horror she just like destroys the adventurers guild and stuff so i don't know i mean it's a really weird concept the relationship like i said between the mom and the son i mean the son is kind of a dick so i can kind of see people maybe being turned off by that a little bit likewise the mom is kind of ditzy you know she's shown as very young she basically looks like she's the same age as the son so i can maybe see people being turned off by that too but i don't know i mean I mean, it's only been one episode i think the second episode comes out today but i didn't watch it but i don't know i mean i just think it's cool that it's taking like the isekai formula and it's trying to do something different with it you know like instead of it just being you know a mary sue protagonist who you know he lands in one of these worlds and he makes a harem out of a bunch of like cute girls or whatever and like that's it i think it's cool for it to be like there's this kid he's kind of a dick his mom comes along with him you know that she's gonna embarrass him and do mom type things you know and not only that but she's like a better fighter than him because she has like two swords and better abilities so i think it's an interesting premise i think seeing where it goes of like the mom showing him up and doing mom type things where she embarrasses him in front of girls and stuff i see potential there but you know i mean the only time will tell maybe it'll end up being a terrible series but as of right now i do recommend it I do think it seems, like I said, pretty interesting, pretty unique. So yeah, if this sounds interesting to you, it's called, once again, Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two-Hit Multi-Target Attacks. And same as all the other anime I've mentioned, it is on Crunchyroll. So if you feel like checking it out, there you go. Alrighty, moving on to something a little different. I had been wanting to watch this movie for a while, and I just hadn't gone to watch it, you know? Like, I had wanted to watch opening day, but I just never got to. So, I want to say it was, like, Saturday. You know, like, the next day after recording the podcast, I went, and I finally saw Toy Story 4. And I guess my thoughts on it, you know, maybe I'll do a review on it, you know? It seems like it's something I think I would like to do a review on it to give, like, deeper thoughts and stuff. But overall, I really liked it. Uh, I know a lot of people, when they heard there was going to be a Toy Story 4, they were a bit worried or like, you know, cynical about it because they're like, you know, Toy Story 3 ended so perfectly. Why do we need a Toy Story 4? It's probably a cash grab. And well, yeah, I mean, to be fair, probably is a cash grab. I mean, let's be honest. Studios make stuff for money. I mean, that's the way it works. Um, I had faith, you know, that Pixar would probably do a Toy Story movie 
if they felt they could do something with it, you know? Because Toy Story is their first movie they ever made. It's kind of their baby. So I felt like, you know, if they're going to make a part four, there's probably like a good reason for it. And yeah, I mean, sure enough, even if it is a bit unexpected, you know, some of the stuff that happens in it, especially after like Toy Story 3 ended, I still think it was really good. You know, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun seeing like the new character Forky, which is like the little fork toy that the little girl makes. I thought he was funny, honestly. I thought it was just really entertaining seeing him like come to terms like with the fact that he's more than trash, you know, I thought that was fun. And I thought like the relationship between like Woody and Bo Peep, that was interesting because, you know, in Toy Story 3, when he says that they lost her along the way, like that really broke my heart a little bit because in the first and second movie, you can tell like they, they have a thing going. So seeing her come back and she's like this toy that, you know, got tired of sitting on a shelf. And so, so she's like, you know, wandering around as like a nomad and, you know, doing her thing. I thought that was really interesting. And I thought it was really interesting seeing Woody. I don't know. I mean, like he learns some stuff and he kind of learns to think for himself a bit. So that's, I thought that was interesting. Now that's all I'm going to say. But overall, Toy Story 4, I really liked it. I thought that even though it's like really unexpected after Toy Story 3, I still think they did a good job with it. And yeah, I mean, I would recommend watching it, you know, like if you were a little bit hesitant, like I said, it is going to be a little different compared to like where Toy Story 3 left off. But I still think they did a good job with it. You know, I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was cute. I thought it had like really nice moments and stuff. So there you go. You know, I recommend it. I give it a thumbs up. So there you go. Alrighty, and with that being said, that basically does it for my week. Um, you know, there's a few things that I wanted to watch, such as like Stranger Things, and there's some stuff that I wanted to play, but didn't really get too deep into it that I think it's worth talking about, you know. Maybe I'll talk about it next week. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully one of the anime I talked about, hopefully it caught your interest, or hopefully my recommendation of Toy Story 4, you know, pushes you to watch it, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, it's time to turn over to the news. And yeah, I have a pretty interesting, you know, little mix of news. Most of those news stories are new. Some of them are actually stuff that I want to talk about last week, but I kind of held off, you know, because I decided I just wanted to talk to Slim in a more like free form sort of style. But uh, yeah, with that being said, you know, let's dive into the news. Uh, the first news story that I want to talk about is that last week I talked, you know, briefly about the Nintendo Switch Lite. And basically the Nintendo Switch Lite, it's going to be like a handheld switch that it's going to have uh it's going to have the joy cons attached it's not going to have the rumble feature uh it's supposed to have a better battery life and it doesn't connect to the tv i believe so it's mostly just a handheld device right and so like i said i briefly touched upon that uh since then though it's funny because they've announced that there's going to be another switch model uh, so as the title of the article states, updated original Switch model with improved battery life announced. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's not much of a news story because honestly, there's not that much going on. The only difference between this and, you know, a Switch that you might currently own is that this one is going to have just a better battery life. So yeah, I have the article in front of me. So as it says here, whereas the current original Switch model runs about 2.5 to 6.5 hours, the new one is supposed to run about 4.5 to 9 hours. And I believe it says the new model will go on sale in late August in Japan and early September in Europe. A release date for North America has yet to be announced. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, not much of a new story, but I still think it's kind of interesting. I mean, if you don't own a Switch yet, I guess it's good news because, you know, you're going to get a Switch that has better battery life. Uh, for anyone who already owns a Switch, though, it does kind of suck because it's literally like the same thing you have now, but with better battery, you know, so you are missing out in like that aspect. But yeah, if anyone hasn't bought a Switch yet, then there you go. You know, more good news. You can either buy the Switch Lite, which is going to be portable uh, and only handheld and it's going to be cheaper. Or you can wait and you can buy yourself this version that is like the version we have now, but it has a better battery life. So, you know, there you go. Moving on, this next news story is something that I'm pretty excited for because we finally have a release date for Luigi's Mansion 3. 
Uh, as the title of the article states, Luigi's Mansion 3 launches October 31st. So I think this is pretty cool. I think that Luigi's Mansion coming out in uh, Halloween, I think that's perfect. I think that is like really fitting. And I'm also excited because that means it comes out sooner than we thought, you know? Or like maybe not sooner than we thought, but I guess what I'm trying to say is it comes out pretty soon, you know? Like we're already what? Like nearing the end of july so we have what august september october so like in three months it comes out i think that's really cool um so yeah i mean i don't really know what, what else to say um all they really say is that it's coming out they give a description of like the series uh for anyone who doesn't know the story of this luigi's mansion as it says right here luigi embarks on a dream vacation with mario and friends upon receiving an invitation to a luxurious hotel however his dream quickly becomes a nightmare when king boo reveals everything has been a ploy to capture mario and friends with the assistance of professor e gad once again the reluctant and cowardly hero luigi traverses up and down treacherous floors of the now ominous hotel on a quest to save them so yeah, I mean, it is interesting that it's being called Luigi's Mansion, even though here it seems to take place in a hotel, but I like it. I think it makes sense. I think it's like a good transition, you know? I think a hotel is like a good uh, setting, you know? And yeah, from what I've seen of gameplay, game looks really interesting. I'm really excited because I really love the series. I'm excited because from what I've seen, it does seem like it's going to be a little more like Luigi's Mansion 1 than 2. So yeah, you know, I'm excited for the game. If you're excited for the game keep an eye out for it you know it's coming soon so there you go you know look forward to it moving on this next news story is an interesting one because like how should i phrase it um okay so not that long ago or i guess at this point it has been quite a bit i mean it might have been what like a year or whatever i made a video about seven sega franchises that i think should make a comeback all right and you know one of them that i mentioned was panzer dragoon Sure enough, at this C3, Nintendo, you know, I don't actually don't remember if it's a new game or a remake, but regardless, they mentioned the return of Panzer Dragoon. Likewise, as this new story states right here, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD coming west for PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on October 29th, PC this winter. So yeah, I mean, for me, it's just like really interesting scene that I made this video where I'm like, hey, Sega, you know, you should bring these series back. And while I'm not saying that like, you know, Sega saw my video and while, you know, of course, out of the seven, there's only, I, I believe, like the second one that's been confirmed. It's just like really exciting to see these series come back. You know, uh, likewise, you know, going off tangent a little bit, I made a video also uh, where I was saying, you know, seven newcomers that I think I like, could totally make it into Smash. And one of them was Banjo-Kazooie. And I explained, you know, that Microsoft has a really good relationship with Nintendo that, you know, I think they could totally make it in. And I remember people telling me that I was crazy, that it would never happen, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, Banjo and Kazooie are coming to Smash. And so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think it's just this feeling of seeing stuff that I suggested and that I said, you know, should totally like happen, happen. Like, it's just really exciting, you know, like when it comes to the Sega thing, I'm hoping that more Sega series get um you know uh revived or whatever you want to call it i really hope we get like more space channel 5 oh actually speaking of which space channel 5 it's not necessarily a new game but they did mention the space channel 5 uh like vr thing so that actually i mean not to like toot my own horn but i would say that out of seven that is three franchises that i talked about that are making a bit of a comeback so i mean like i said exciting stuff uh, likewise, you know, I hope that more of the Smash characters I suggested make it in, you know? Uh, like I suggested Shantae, Shovel Knight, Rayman, Banjo-Kazooie, Crash, that sort of thing. Uh, Shovel Knight, you know, at the very least, he did make it in as a trophy. But yeah, I mean, I really hope that more of the stuff I mentioned actually happens. That'd be really exciting. But, uh, that aside, you know, I'm sorry I went on a little bit of a rant. Uh, as I said, uh, yeah, so Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD coming to all consoles October 29th and then the PC this winter. Um, unfortunately, uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, it originally came to the Nintendo Wii in 2006, and although I have played it, it is one of the ones I played, like, the least, you know? Like, I'm more familiar with, like, the GameCube ones, honestly, but, uh, regardless, though, 
I think it's really cool to see the series, you know, coming back. I hope this opens the door for either like a new, you know, Super Monkey Ball or maybe even like more ports or whatever. But yeah, I mean, if you have any love for the Super Monkey Ball franchise, there you go. You know, we have a game coming out soon. And let me see if there's anything else I can read about. Uh, all it really says that it's coming back in HD. There's going to be online leaderboards. And that, yeah, it's just going to be on like every system and stuff with like optimized controls controls and that sort of thing so i don't know you know if you've ever played a super monkey ball game before and you love the franchise you know good news there's a game getting an hd remaster or whatever and if you never have and you're you've been thinking of maybe you know jumping in at one point then there you go you know this might be a good place to jump in since there is a game coming to all consoles and pc like within the year so there you go you know Alrighty, transitioning over to movie news. This is a story that I want to talk about last week, but, you know, like I said, I kind of just decided to, like, leave it for this week because, I don't know, movies isn't really something me and Slim were talking about. We were talking more about, like, anime and video games, that sort of thing. But, uh, as the title of the article states, Mulan teaser trailer reveals first look at Disney's live-action remake. Uh, starting with the positives... If you watch the trailer, it is, like, well shot, you know? Like, it does look really nice. Uh, some of the imagery is really cool, you know? We see, like, Mulan, uh, like, at the beginning where they're trying to, like, really, you know, dress her up and make her look, like, wife material or whatever. Uh, we see some of her dressed, like, as a warrior charging on a horse. We see her, you know, doing some, like, acrobatic stuff, shooting arrows, that sort of thing. So what they show, it, it looks cool, you know, it looks nice. Uh, however, you know, going to the negatives, as always, I don't, I don't know. I don't care for live action remakes of animated things. I think that all of the live action re uh, Disney remakes... I'm not very fond of any of them, you know? I thought Beauty and the Beast was, you know, pretty subpar. I thought that Dumbo... I mean, like, the Dumbo parts were fine when they were showing Dumbo, I think. But they made it too much about the humans, you know? Went in a totally different direction, so, like, I thought that was kind of lame. Uh, the new Lion King movie coming out, like, up soon or whatever. I have no faith in that. I think that it looks, like, so emotionless and, like... I don't know, it just looks terrible to me. Like, seriously, look up the clip where uh, Simba is running around the jungle or whatever with Timon and Pumbaa. If you mute it, you can't even tell they're singing because, like, the mouths aren't even moving and all they're doing is just, like, running straight through the jungle. It is, like, so... Like, it's, it's, like, the most boring thing ever, right? So I have no faith in that. Uh, so likewise, you know, uh, Mulan, live action, I don't see the reason for it. I think the animated version is excellent. And there are some things that they say they're changing this time around that I'm not very fond of. Uh, like, for instance, in this, uh, article, I don't think they talk about it, but I've seen that supposedly, you know, uh, they're replacing Mushu, which is the, uh, dragon voiced by Eddie Murphy. I think they're either, like, I think they're either getting rid of the character, or I kind of heard that maybe they're gonna replace them with, like, a different type of, like, animal or something. I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure that they're just gonna remove him. Based on, like, the teaser trailer, right? So, like, that's really lame to me. Uh, likewise, they're changing Mulan's love interest. Uh, while, like, the love interest thing wasn't that big of a deal in, like, the original movie, I still thought it was kind of interesting how, you know, her commanding officer kind of, you know, fell in love with her and whatever, even though Mulan was the guy. You know, like, that was, that was an interesting dynamic. And here, uh, for whatever reason, it says that they're replacing, uh, her, her love interest. It's gonna be, like, some guy that's one of her allies, like, in the army. So, like, that's weird. And finally, unlike the original where there was, like, a lot of singing, you know, from, like, Mulan and the soldiers from, uh... I forget what his name is, but, like, the commanding officer, when he's singing, like, I'll Make a Man Out of You, which is, like, an excellent song. From what I've read, it seems like in this version, there isn't going to be any singing. I think I had read somewhere that, like, at most, they're just going to have, like, the uh, instrumentals playing, but there's going to be no singing, which, like, I think that's really lame, you know? So, yeah, pretty mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it does seem to look pretty good. It does seem like they're making, like, a more mature, like, war movie sort of thing, which does look kind of cool, I'll admit. 
But on the other hand, once again, unnecessary remake. They're taking out, you know, the talking dragon character who was like awesome. They're taking out the music, which I don't know what the point of the movie is then. And they're also, you know, changing the love interest up, which I think is weird, right? So yeah, I don't think there's a really a release date yet. I think all they really said... Oh, actually, there is a release date. It says it's set for release in March 2020. So I'm not excited for this. I have no interest in it. As with any, you know, live action remake, I think it's really unnecessary and stuff. But I don't know. If you're excited for this, more power to you. Hope you enjoy the movie when it comes out. I mean, I guess I wish it the best, you know? Hopefully it does well you know not just like financially but like hopefully it, it it like proves itself and is a good movie but i mean i guess only time will tell but there you go you know uh moving on to tv news i actually have two news stories this week the first is that rick and morty season four uh it released a a, a couple of uh like images and they talked about the season four coming up so if you read the article, you know, it's, it has, it's, it's chock full of information, but, uh, one of the takeaways is that, yeah, Rick and Morty season four, I believe it's supposed to come out in November. Yeah, I believe I saw it somewhere. It's supposed to come out in November. So that's interesting. You know, after the show being away for like two years, that's good to hear, you know, for fans. Uh, but yeah, one of the takeaways is that it's coming out in November. I think they're going to show some footage at San Diego Comic-Con. So that's cool. You know, that's exciting. Uh, another takeaway is that they show some images that I think it's a bit of a stretch. I don't really see it. But yeah, they say that it's supposed to be like a parody of Gladiator because one image is of Rick walking through like a wheat field and like the way he has, he has his hands outstretched, I guess it's supposed to be like reminiscent of Gladiator. Uh, another image has him, I mean, he's like surrounded by like some lizard dudes and like high tech gear. It looks like he's going to fight them. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Not really much to say about the images, but uh, yeah, basically, you know, I enjoy Rick and Morty. I think it's an interesting show. I do think that it's a shame how it's become like a bit of a meme it's become kind of cringy due to uh the fan base you know like there's a lot of like the fan base that they just meme it to death and you know idiotically just shout out the uh what do you call it the uh catchphrases and they idolize the character of rick even though he's like a terrible person that sort of thing so you know i do think it's a shame that the show is kind of ruined by like, the fan base they make it kind of cringy and awkward but uh that aside you know i think if you enjoy if you ignore the fan base so you just watch the show i do think it's an interesting show i do think it's really entertaining i do think it has like some smart things to say every so often and it does make Mix them well with some like dumb, you know, like stupid gags and humor and stuff, you know? So I'm excited. I really want to see the show when it comes out. As I said, I believe it comes out in November. So that's exciting. And so likewise, you know, if you've never seen the show, now is the time to, sh uh, to catch up before it premieres again in November. And if you have seen the show and you enjoy it, then there you go, you know, look forward to it. Check out the article if you're interested. They give some information about, like I said, how they're gonna show stuff at San Diego Comic-Con, the images, that sort of thing. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below for the article. And yeah, I mean, just look forward to the show, I guess, cause it is coming, you know, towards the end of the year. So there you go. Alrighty, as for my second, uh, I guess you'd call it like TV show, uh, news story. I don't know how many of you ever watched Rocco's Modern Life, but yeah, Rocco's Modern Life, it's really weird because when the show ended, it ended really awkwardly. Where basically, I believe there was like this spaceship that landed like on like the main character's house. And so he and his friends like went into the spaceship and they got like sent to space. And it's like, you know, like they say in the show that they were gone for like years and they crash land back on earth and they're back. And that's where the show ends. Like literally that's the whole last episode. It's just like really weird, really like unsatisfying. And for a while now they had been saying that they want to do like a follow up to that where they want to give the show like an actual ending and stuff. And for a while, they had said they were going to make like a TV movie. And as the title of this article states, it looks like we're finally getting it. Uh, as you know, the title states, Rocco's Modern Life Netflix movie poster confirms August release date. So yeah, if you've ever watched Rocco's Modern Life and you're excited for it to get like an actual ending, 
there you go. You know, there's a one hour TV special coming soon. Uh, I'm trying to look for more information about it. It says that it's going to be called Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling. Uh, it's supposed to be hitting Netflix globally on August 9th. And yeah, apart from it saying that all the voice actors are going to like return, it says that it has to do uh, with, you know, like I said, uh, kind of a follow up to like the final episode where uh, Rocco and his group of friends, they come back to Earth. Uh, yeah, it says, it says here they were gone for 20 years. Like, why? That's just like such a weird way to end the show. But anyway, uh, yeah, it says they're coming back to Earth after being gone for 20 years. And it has to do with them getting used to everything being like different. So I don't know. I mean, I, I've watched the show before. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was fun. I remember seeing that last episode and being like, this is really weird. Why did it end like this? So seeing that they're making like a follow up to it and that they're kind of, you know, follow up the last episode where they do like, hey, you know, they're bad and this is how they deal with like being gone for so long i mean i guess it's an interesting premise like it's interesting enough but uh yeah you know same as the last story link is in the description below you can read the uh, article and you can watch like the little teaser trailer or whatever so there you go you know if you have any love for rocco's modern life there's a movie coming out really soon what is it like like two three weeks so be excited for it i guess Finally, this last news story is an anime news story, or I guess more of like a manga news story. And I'll admit, I'm covering this story not so much because of what the story is actually about, but because when I saw it, I was reminded of this like series and I just wanted to like bring it to attention. All right. So uh, starting with what the article itself is about, as the title of the article states, uh, manga Mahou Shoujo site ends. Uh, so basically, you know, there's this manga and Maho Shoujo site translates to magical girl site. And apparently, you know, the article's about how it's going to end soon. Like, basically, you know, it says that it uh, premiered in July 2013. I think it's supposed to end, like, in August, I think is what I saw somewhere. And so, yeah, you know, it's kind of an interesting story in and of, it, in and of itself. That If you've been following this manga, it's ending soon. So, like, that's interesting. Uh, like I said, though, the reason I bring this story up isn't so much because I think that it's interesting that the manga is ending. It's more about bringing to attention the story itself, okay? Uh, so I already had my channel, but I hadn't started the podcast yet. And so a few, you know, seasons ago, there was this show called Magical Girl Sight. And it's based off of this manga. And when I watched this show, like, I wanted to talk about it so bad, but I didn't have, like, an, uh, a podcast like this to vent about it. But it is just the most edgy, like, stupid, over-the-top show that you've ever seen, all right? Like, the only reason I watched every episode is because I was pulled in by, like, the absurdity of it, okay? Uh, basically, we follow this character that she is the most over-the-top, meek, talks like this, you know, where she whispers all the time, character ever, okay? And the first episode, when the series starts, we basically see how she is everybody's punching bag. At school, there's all these bullies, you know, there's these girls that are constantly beating her up, uh, you know, in the bathroom, they try to, like, drown her in the toilet. They beat the crap out of her. They put razors, like, an exaggerated amount of razors. I don't know where you would get this many razors. It's, like, easily 200 razors in her, uh, you know, in Japan, how they, how they show in anime that they have, like, the little locker that keeps their shoes. They fill her locker to the top with razors so that she'll cut herself when she tries to get her shoes. So they beat her up. They try to drown her in a toilet. They fill her shoe locker with razors. She cuts herself. They totally vandalize her desk, cover it with all sorts of terrible things. Somehow teachers don't even notice. Uh, to top it all off, she almost gets sexually assaulted by some of the bullies, like boyfriends or whatever. Once again, nobody notices. And then when she goes home, her brother, her older brother, who's like this, you know, A plus model student, apparently every night to vent his frustrations, he always beats the crap out of her too. Like, like, like he just abuses her. And somehow her parents don't notice. 
So, I don't know. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the the anime starts with the most ridiculous, look at this poor girl, look how they abuse her. And she is just like a parody of being like a, how can I explain it? She's like a parody of being like a meekless, helpless girl. Because I'm telling you, like she always whispers when she talks. She always apologizes for everything. Even though she's getting abused, she doesn't talk to anybody about it. It's like the most ridiculous, like over the top thing. And from there, though, it gets even more ridiculous and edgy because she, for whatever reason, clicks on this website that it gives her the power of being a magical girl. And it gives her like this little gun with wings on it. And when she shoots it at people, it teleports them away. So in the first episode, she uses it on some bullies. And where do they get teleported to? They get teleported in front of a moving train and they get run over and die. And when they cut back to the girl, because she used the power every time she uses it, she bleeds from her eyes. And if that sounds ridiculous to you, if that sounds really edgy that they're trying to make magical girls, but they're like edgy and they're killing people and stuff, you have no idea. Like they introduce another girl that she's like this idol, like, you know, she's part of an idol group and she looks like she's like the most bubbly, like cheerful person ever. But secretly she wants to like kill like one of the other magical girls. And when she's like alone, she like, like chews at her nails and like breaks them off and like she's bleeding everywhere. And she's like insane for some reason. And her magical girl item is her underwear. That when she puts those underwear on, anything she tells other people, like, she hypnotizes them. Like, they have to follow her orders. And I don't know, man. I could talk about this show all day, but it is, like, the most edgy, dumb, bullshit story ever. And oh my god. So, I don't know. I just want to talk about the show because seeing that the manga is going to end reminded me of when I watched it. And like I said, it reminded me of the time that I watched the show and I didn't have like a way to vent about it. So, I don't know, man. I say good riddance. I'm glad the show's, uh, the manga's ending. You know, I think, you know, the world will be better for it. But yeah, if you want to watch like the most over the top, edgy show where they're trying to be so hardcore and just have like random, you know, death and gore and you know a, a, a main character who gets abused all the time and she's like you know so meek and quiet and i don't know dude check out magical girl site if that's your thing check it out you know at the very least you know maybe you'll get some amusement out of it the way i did where i was just so amazed at like the absurdity of it but yeah you know i think i've ranted enough like i said if you're interested check out the anime and if not then you know, nothing of value was lost, but there you go. Alrighty, all that ranting aside about Magical Girl Sight, uh, that basically brings us to the end of another news week. As always, you know, hopefully there was something that you guys found entertaining or informative, that sort of thing, you know. Hopefully there's a game you're excited for, or hopefully there's, you know, just something that I talked about that you were interested in. And uh, with that being said, you know, last but not least, let's move on to the last segment of the podcast, which is, of course, the content creator spotlight and this week's content creator i don't know i feel kind of iffy not not iffy about showcasing them but it's just that i don't know what their deal is too much like i'll admit i haven't talked to them too much but uh basically the channel that i want to cover that i'm hoping this kind of you know i feel like the channel you know this guy i feel like he is kind of suffering a little bit so hopefully me talking about his channel and people checking it out, hopefully that gives them some like ins- inspiration and stuff. But uh, basically I'm talking about a channel called Carpathia 808. And Carpathia 808, it's a really interesting music channel that they do all sorts of things, you know? Uh, he has done tutorials on how to play old school music. He has done stuff where he like remixes and edits music, you know? Like he'll say, uh, like Green Hill Zone, but without the drums, I think. And, you know, stuff like that, where he like tweaks the songs in a certain way. And some of the stuff they've been doing recently is something called oscilloscope deconstruction. And I'm not really too sure how to explain it. I'm not too really sure how it works. You know, I'm not much of a music person. But basically, it seems like they run the music through an oscilloscope 
And then they look at like different channels of sound and they like tweak them and mess with them and that sort of thing. Like I said, I'm not too sure how to explain it. I'm not much of a music person, but trust me, like the stuff they do with music is really interesting. But uh, yeah, the reason I sound kind of iffy is that even though they have like more than 5,000 subscribers and even though they've done a lot of videos... Uh, they made a, a, a video two weeks ago, but before that, it had been six months. And I know that this person, they've put out videos in the past that even though they have like the watch hours and the uh, subscriber number, for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't want them monetized. And I think they've even had videos that have just been like flagged and stuff. So I don't know. I mean, I feel kind of iffy about showcasing them in the sense that I'm not really sure where they stand on the channel, you know, like, I don't know if they kind of want to just let it die at this point or not. Like, I'm not too sure. I haven't really talked to them. But on the other hand, I think Carpathia 808 definitely deserves the attention. I think what they do with music is really interesting. Seeing how they deconstruct music and remix it and edit it and tweak it and stuff. I think it's interesting, you know? I think it's like really interesting videos to check out. And like I said, I don't know. I'm just hoping that maybe, you know, if they see that like I covered them and I'm giving them a shout out. And if they see that, you know, some of you go and either like subscribe or like their videos or just check them out. I'm hoping that inspires them to like, you know, do more uploads and stuff. But yeah, I mean, only time will tell. I mean, I know YouTube is making it hard for a lot of different content creators. You know, some people are doing very well because I guess the stuff they cover, you know, it's just very easy to like, you know, upload. But for other people who want to do like reviews or they want to like do remixes or parody stuff, you know, I know that they, they struggle a lot, but uh. I don't know. That aside, Carpathia808, if you happen to listen to this, I think your channel's super interesting. I think all your remixes and tutorials and deconstructions and stuff, I think they're great. I always have a good time watching them, you know, that sort of thing. I would say keep up the good work and, you know, try to not give up. And yeah, for anyone else, if you're listening to this, I say check out Carpathia808, even though they have like over 5,000 subscribers and they don't need my help at all. I still want to give them that shout out. I want to give them that little boost. So as usual, you know, if you're listening to this, check them out. And if you do, you know, show them some love and tell them that Wannabe Reviewer sent you. So there you go. Alrighty, and with that being said, that brings us to the end of another podcast that is one more in the bag. And yeah, you know, as usual, hopefully you enjoyed the podcast, whether it was me talking about the anime I watched that are new this season, or it was me talking about some upcoming games, or it was me ranting about Magical Girl side, or introducing you to Carpathia 808, that sort of thing. Hopefully that was something that you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys had a good time listening to this. And yeah, I mean, to wrap up my name is a wannabe reviewer i'm the host of the wannabe podcast available on all sorts of platforms you know you can go check that out uh you can find me over on social media such as twitter instagram and twitch.tv uh when it comes to the last one hopefully sometime this upcoming week i'll try to uh stream again you know i streamed uh i want to say last saturday but i didn't really announce it it was kind of out of nowhere so of course only like one person showed up but yeah hopefully i stream again you know sometime this week maybe tuesday or wednesday you know we'll see how that goes and yeah you know check out my youtube channel i do all sorts of reviews on media you know whether it's anime tv shows movies video games that sort of thing and speaking of which you know i just released my episode of forget me not which is a series, you know, like a new series I'm trying to get off the ground where basically, you know, each episode will be about me covering some sort of like obscure or little known Wii game, you know, because I think there's some really great hidden gems on the Wii that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, the first episode was about Pandora's Tower. So I'm really proud with that, how that video came out. I would say go check it out. You know, please, I really appreciate it. And yeah, with that being said, you know, there's not really much more to, to say. So my name is Ian Wannabe Reviewer. I hope you guys have an excellent week. I'll try to be back here next week for episode 40. And until then, hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you guys next time.